Let me tell you about me. Take it down in one, two, three. Today on The DIY Designer, we are making robes. I am showing you the simplest, most basic, built for beginners DIY to create your own robe that can be worn at home as a robe, it can be worn as a jacket, a duster, a dress, a top. This amazingly versatile DIY is brought to you by my favorite parenting hack, KiwiCo Crates. <laughs> Today's what we call a triple whammy. Kids have no school, not even Zoom school. They got nothing. My husband is gone for three days. My sitter called in sick. You know, COVID's just given us all this extra special time to connect as a family, you know, just together all the time. It's so special. It's so special. However, I do have something in my back pocket. Hey guys, what do you think about doing some kiwis? Yes! Oh my God! Close the door behind you. <laughs> no, nope, inside, <Hey>! Kiwi. <laughs> inside, close the door. Ah, oh, my favorite parenting hack, my KiwiCo crates. These suckers arrive at my door every month with a steam project specifically formulated for each kid based off their age. So this is Blake's, this is one about Australia. And what I love is not only is there a project we're gonna do, but there's also this really cool envelope inside which has all of these different note cards which Blake can actually turn into a book. In the box, you'll get everything that you need, including the directions and even something to protect your surface. This is Connor's. This one's gonna be a little bit more complicated because he's older, so it's got a little bit more engineering in it. Hi, listen. <laughs> we tried. This is actually created by a mom of three in California, and each box is like rigorously tested by a group of kids that actually do steam projects on the regular. This one, all about learning colors. It comes with Q-tips to not make a mess, but you know, we like making messes. Even this was really fun. This is a simple engineering hack showing you how to take a piece of paper and make it stand up tall. By cutting these little slits and then putting like stickers to hold them flat, it made this backdrop for Blake that she could add the stickers to and it started to look like an aquarium. This is what it looked like when she was done and she is obsessed at sitting next to her bed and she can't believe that she made the whole thing. Now with Connor, we were learning what salt does to paint. He loved it. And even here, like he's making the mechanical sweeper and Blake is helping him out. And there's sort of fine motor skills that come into play here. There might be certain elements where you need to get in there and help them, but for the most part, they can do it on their own. And Connor made an actual sweeper. Like this thing actually sweeps. That's so cool. Oh, man, it really is. You guys, I'm obsessed. I cannot recommend this enough if you're a parent, if you're an aunt, if you're a grandparent, if you're just a good friend and you want to buy something for one of your friends, man, this is the coolest. So I will put the link down below. You guys can check out everything that they have to offer. It's just absolutely awesome. My kids are obsessed. Okay, let's get into today's DIY because it's awesome. For those of you that are new, my name is Orly Shani and this is the DIY Designer. Welcome, I'm so glad that you found me. I release videos every Friday, really great DIY fashion and sometimes home decor and today is a fashion one that I know you're gonna love. So we're gonna be making robes, but we're not just making robes that you wear when you get out of the shower and you walk around your house. They can be worn that way. Yes, they can, but they can also be worn as like a kimono style duster that you wear over like jeans and a t-shirt or a dress. They can also be worn as a dress, actually, like three or four different ways as a dress. And I'm trying to see if I can get out a bonus video on Sunday showing you all the ways that they can be worn. But the reason this is so great is this is so easy. This tutorial, you guys, is so easy. Easy. There is no pattern and it is so simple. Great for beginners. I'm gonna show you how to take fabric. I recommend at least three yards. We're basically folding it in half with the fold being on your shoulder. So depending on how long you want it, that's how many yards you get. The way to make it super versatile is your fabric choice. Number one, don't do stretch. You want a woven. I recommend like 100% rayon is an awesome option. It's really easy to sew. They have tons of prints. It's really like breezy and slinky and feels amazing on. The next thing is really just gonna come down to print. If you were wearing jeans and a t-shirt and you were gonna throw this over, what kind of vibe would you want? So really just think about that from the design perspective. I'm gonna do a little bonus one at the end, which is super fun. It's based off of a, a robe I saw JLo wearing with her name on the back, which was really cool. And also this really cool feather trimmed uh, robe situation I saw. I'm gonna show you guys how you can apply those to either a robe you already own like I'm doing or apply it to your DIY robe and make the whole dang thing from scratch. So fun, I can't wait. Let's get right into it, materials. <laughs> So 
grab your fabric and just clean up all your edges. My fabric, for whatever reason, they didn't cut it straight across the pattern, so I'm straightening it up. But even if yours is not a pattern, you just wanna make sure that you're starting off with really straight, clean edges on the top and the bottom. The next thing I did is cut about a four inch wide piece that I can use as the belt for my robe. And I cut it following the pattern, that way when I actually fold it, I'll have kind of a crisp pattern. Now take your fabric and fold it in half. Right now it's folded in half from top to bottom, so the selvage edge is on the right and left side. Make sure that you straighten everything up, pin it so that nothing moves because we're gonna be cutting it at the same time and you wanna make sure that it's even. Now take it and fold it in half again. What we're gonna do is cut out a little neck hole. So it's a lot smaller than you think it needs to be. It's only about one inch deep and like maybe two inches wide. It's gonna open up on you. So a lot smaller than you think you need, but that is basically our neck hole. Now when you open it, it's almost like a caftan style, right? You could slip this over your head, but we're gonna cut the center front up. Right now, I am only cutting one layer of fabric. I'm cutting the center front of the top fabric, which is my opening. That's my neck hole. And now I'm gonna cut like an upside down L going across and down. That's actually gonna create the structure. This is it, you guys. It is so basic. So what you're gonna do is figure out how wide you want your sleeve. Originally, I measured a robe that I had and the sleeve width uh, was about 11 inches, which is 22 inches all the way around. So I marked it at 11 and then I went in about 14. If you decided to go in further, the volume of your robe would get more narrow. So the longer your sleeve is, the more you're cutting in and you can see the more narrow it would get. Obviously, the shorter you cut in your sleeve, the like the more full it is. So that measurement is just based off your own kind of desire. I did mine at about 14 inches. So it's 11 inches wide in 14 and down. And you can see it creates an upside down L. Now I didn't like how full the sleeve actually was. So I shave off about two inches. So I think my sleeve ended up at about nine inches and I just meet up with my side seam. Now, normally, this is when you would do your fabric face to face, pin and sew. But I wanna use a French seam so that it's really clean finished on all sides and I don't have an overlock machine. So what I've done is I'm actually sewing my seam with the right side of my fabric out, meaning the seam is on the outside of my robe. It's obviously not how we're gonna keep it, but that's how you do a French seam. First seam is on the right side of the fabric. Now, flip it inside out, right? This is the wrong side of my fabric and you can see that it's clean finished on the wrong side and the seam is exposed on the outside. Now, you're gonna fold it. Take your seam and kind of fold it right along there. You see that? I'm now going to do my regular stitch all the way down. And what this does is it takes the original first stitch that I did, which is on the right side of my fabric on the outside, and it hides it inside this new one. Now, when I look at it from the outside, it's a regular, normal seam, right? You don't see it. But on the inside, what I have is this really nice, clean, finished seam. When you get to the L shape in your corner, make sure that you leave your presser foot down. I mean, leave your needle down, lift your presser foot and rotate. If you realize that you haven't gone far enough, just go back, a few more stitches, lift your presser foot, leave the needle in and make a sharp 90 degree angle. So you've got that nice crisp angle. And again, we're going all the way down encapsulating that original seam inside the new one. And anytime you're doing a French seam, you actually uh, iron it twice. Once with the first seam, which is on the wrong side of your fabric, and one with the second seam, which is now on the inside. You sort of do it this way. You like pull it both directions, making sure that everything lays really flat. And it's a super simple way to clean finish everything. Now, because we just cut it straight up the front, you can see I have this like lapel situation, which I don't want. So I wanna fold it in, but I tried it on just so I can get a sense of where I'm actually gonna be cutting it. So you kind of fold it in there. And what I did is just put a pin at the area where I am gonna shave it off. So right now my robe is folded in half, so I'm cutting both sides at the same time. And there is my pin. Pin everything together, and originally this was my thought. I would just sort of shave off like a skinny triangle going all the way down. But what I actually recommend doing is instead of just taking out this, you know, two inch piece on an angle, I recommend doing a two inch piece all the way down like that. Find your starting point and cut it straight down so that it's straight in front and not on an angle. Now this is an awesome hack for making something look really, really professional and clean finished. It's a double fold bias tape. This, when you open it up, 
you're gonna sandwich it in between your fabric. And when you sew it, it will clean finish it from both sides really easily. If you don't wanna use bias tape or you can't get your hands on any, just do the double fold hem. You know the deal, you fold once, fold twice, and sew so that you don't see any raw edges. But this is how the double fold bias tape works. You literally just open it up, take your fabric, this is our center front seam, the opening of our robe, and I'm sliding it all the way to the edge, pinning it, pin it all the way around. Bias tape, because it's on the bias, will go all the way around your neck, the curve of your neck, and it won't pucker or pleat or wrinkle. It will just wrap around beautifully. So it's a really easy way to create a clean finish edge without needing to have enough scraps of your own fabric to create a bias tape. Now, I like when I'm doing things like this, what I like to do is use my presser foot as my guide. So what I do is I line my presser foot up on the edge of my bias tape and I move my needle wherever I want it to go. I've just found that it's a lot easier for me to use my presser foot as a guide than it is to use the actual markings on my base plate there. It just guarantees that I stay super, super straight. So you can see I moved it all the way to the edge and then I moved my needle over and I sewed the entire thing down, sandwiching the front and the back at the same time. That was me just hemming my sleeves and now I'm hemming the base. Again, I like doing the double fold on everything. It's really easy to do, even if you do it like as you're sewing. You don't need to press it and pin it. You can kind of just roll and go, especially if you have a print like I do, you can just follow the print. Now this is my belt. Take your belt that you cut, fold it face to face and sew it together. You know the deal, you put a safety pin in, you do like the scrunch and slide and flip the whole thing inside out. Now for this, I'm just clean finishing the edge. I like just kind of poking those little edges in, fold them in so they're nice and neat, just like that. You're gonna pin it, and then right there you could either hand sew it or you could machine sew it, but just make sure that you've got a nice, clean, crisp edge. And now you press it. I like hiding the seam of my belt on the edge that way I can use the belt on both sides. This particular fabric, I actually have like two different prints on either side, so I wanna make sure I have the option to use both, so press it with the seam hidden there. Now, iron the whole thing. All right, this is our bonus. Here is my ostrich feather trim. You're gonna fold it in half and cut it so that you're using the same amount for the right and left side of your sleeve. Now, I've got my robe inside out. You're gonna take the uh, trim and you're gonna put it inside, right? So it will be on the right side of my fabric. Now, all of these boas have a rope that it's connected to. So what you're gonna do is from the back side, you are going to take your needle, you're gonna go under the rope and back up through the rope. What this does is it tacks the entire boa down just through the interior base so you're not tacking down any of these feathers. You don't wanna end up smashing the feathers. So by going underneath the rope and back up through the rope, you can feel it with your fingers. It's really easy to do. And you just stitch it all the way around. Once you get all the way around, if you're like me and you have enough to go around twice, move up. I moved up maybe two inches so that I end up with a double wide trim. It's gonna make the sleeve look that much wider, but really all I'm doing is I'm just spacing them out about two inches so that the first row is one inch up from the cuff and the next one is about three. There's my first one, there's my second one, and you can see how nice and full it looks. Now, if you wanna add the letters to yours, like that sort of JLo inspo and like this one, which is really fun and I'm super into, I will link these down below. I bought these at Imperial Bead and Trim from our guy Benjamin. I will link them below. He does have them available online. You, what you wanna do is protect it. So lay it out, then very carefully put something over it. You can use a thin cloth, you can use butcher paper, and I'm using my new Cricut iron, which I'm obsessed with because it gets super high heat and it's really large. So one pass, you can actually iron it. Now I did it about 50% of the way, just enough that it's like on. It's not like on, on, but it's on. Enough that I can flip it inside out and really iron it from the backside. Now from the back side, I have it at a higher heat and I'm gonna do it for a longer period of time. That's getting right at the iron-on adhesive from the back side, making sure to fuse it really well. And what I love is it's really malleable and soft. These are so soft that they become like part of the robe, which is really cool. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna show you how to wear it. I'm not gonna show you all the ways to style it. If I'm able to do that, that will be Sunday's video. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to click that bell so you get a notification when it comes out. Um, but I am just gonna show you like how they came out. I'm obsessed, they're amazing. They're so sexy and so fun and so cool and so easy. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you either on Sunday or next Friday for a brand new video. Have a beautiful week. Take your pretty outfit and go. Show yourself right out of my zone. Now before I lose my control. 
Fazes ao 